वेलकम टू मेडिकल डायलॉग्स जर्नल क्लब योर डेली डोज ऑफ हेल्थ एंड मेडिकल न्यूज आई एम डॉक्टर नंदिता मोहन एंड टुडे आई हैव समथिंग डिफरेंट फॉर यू ऑल नाउ इंस्टेड ऑफ डिटेलिंग अबाउट अ स्टडी टुडे आई विल बी इंट्रोड्यूसिंग यू ऑल टू अ जर्नल दैट इज द इंटरनेशनल जर्नल ऑफ मॉलिकुलर एंड इम्यूनो ऑनकोलॉजी For all those who don't know this actually molecular oncology is an interdisciplinary medical specialty dealing at the interface of medicinal chemistry as well as oncology now it basically refers to the investigation of the chemistry of cancer and tumors at the very basic molecular level now the ijmio is a peer reviewed journal that is published jointly by the molecular oncology society and the immuno oncology leadership network and it is published by scientific scholar so the international journal of molecular and immuno oncology is an open access peer reviewed journal which covers this particular concept and the journal is committed to publishing high quality articles in the field of molecular biological and immunological aspects of oncology So to talk us through the details behind this journal we have on board with us Dr Radhika who is a veteran in the field of medical research and has worked in different topics ranging from therapeutics of the spinal cord injury to neurodegeneration etc and has also been an NIH postdoc fellow she sits now as a member of the editorial board of international journal of molecular and immuno oncology We welcome you to Medical Dialogues ma'am we are really happy to have you on board with us here Thank you Dr Nandita I'm happy to be here So if you could tell us about the International Journal of Molecular and Immuno Oncology like if it's if I talk about its basics when what is was it founded by whom where and why Yes so International Journal of Molecular and Immuno Oncology or IJMIO is currently a journal that is published by Scientific Scholar and uh, we conceptualized it in 2016 so uh, what happened is uh, you know there was a, a genomics meeting uh, conference in ahmedabad and uh, i was attending it and uh, uh, dr purvish parikh uh, who is the founder and the uh, person who dreamed up this journal was at the same meeting and we had a conversation there and i in 2016 i was um interested in doing something new and different uh, along with other things uh, so i basically what i expressed to him is that i want to leave a legacy so uh, all these years i've been doing research and teaching um and uh, uh, all that is fine uh, uh, in addition to that i felt a need to do something that was more that was permanent and that made a, uh, that contributed to a greater change so he told me that you know what uh, would you uh, you know we have uh, an opportunity to be in a uh, honorary executive editor at uh, international journal of molecular and immuno oncology i said okay tell me about it he said no right now it is a dream it is a, uh, you take it forward and we will work together and we let's make it happen so in 2016 this is our conversation it's uh, you know um, at this point it's, uh, it was a brain chat and from there onwards you know so we uh, along with uh, the very initial uh, enthusiastic team uh, which included dr randeep singh who is the current uh, uh, the current editor in chief uh, and uh, a few others we started it up as literally a startup journal from writing uh, everything on the you know from creating the website to uh, planning the journal out and everything so uh this really is a, a little baby that we have nurtured and seen uh, ahead and at the right time we also uh decided that we needed to uh have now a more professional and um a more visible uh, outlook you know first you want your uh your foundation to be very strong so once we were ready we uh then uh, contacted scientific scholar and uh, we had them take over as our publisher so it was uh, for for the reason of uh, taking it to the next professional level and they clearly provide us not only professional but a personal um, service so we are very happy with that and we have a very uh, exciting um, future we believe with the journal so why did the journal choose scientific scholar society for its publication so basically uh, inter- ijmio international journal of molecular and you know oncology it's a doctor uh, basically a physician run journal okay so, so you as you know doctors uh, these are physicians who also have a passion these these particular uh, this group has a passion for research and a passion for new knowledge 
um, out into the world. So uh, while we can uh, put our efforts, um, I being a PhD scholar, I was a sort of a bridge uh, where I could uh, bridge between the clinician and the um, basic scientist. However, we needed uh, a professional touch as well because everyone has their own busy uh, lives, you know, being very busy uh, cancer doctors. So everyone on our team, our editorial team is a medical professional. So we needed to bring in someone uh, who could actually help us uh, reach the next level because we have uh, uh, the desire to become a larger and more widespread journal. So they not uh, not from a niche journal. So Molecular Oncology Society, which is the society which is sponsoring this journal uh, and wanted to now take it to the next level. And that's why we went to Scientific, scientific Scholar and uh, we are very happy. So the reason we selected them was for that. We, not, not just the professionalism, but also the fact that they give extremely personal service. So we, uh, to give you an example, we have monthly meetings right now with with the publisher, with the main um, uh, key individuals of uh, the publish uh, publishing company, as well as uh, our our editorial team. We always have a, a casual online meeting. Uh, many of us have never met. Uh, some of uh, some of you know because um, you know they uh, people would live in different places. But generally, our team tries to meet up at conferences uh, when possible. And uh, Molecular Oncology Society itself has. Uh, a conference, MOSCON, uh, which brings everyone together. So we uh, have a very collegial uh, group, a very, and which has been a very started from a very close knit group of four to five people, and now it's a, it has grown uh, to a few more. And uh, we have a, uh, so I think that beyond professionalism, sometimes you need that personal touch uh, where you can just pick up the phone and talk to them, and we always get a response and we always get uh, help with whatever we need. To. Discuss. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was an insight. So, what can you tell us about the team behind the journal and the Molecular Oncology Society? Yeah. So, as I was saying, uh, most of the te the entire team is uh, they are uh, medical doctors uh, mm -hmm. from various specialties of oncology. So, we have got a pediatric oncologist, uh, and uh, uh, we've got um, oncologists studying various uh, streams. Uh, and uh, I am the um, I am a PhD, but my training was in um, cancer. So, I started my journey with uh, basically with molecular biology. So, when uh, and eventually forayed into various other uh, areas of molecular biology, but always uh, which went uh, into neurodegenerative disease is aging and uh, chronic illnesses so um, our team is entirely uh, the, the editorial team as i said they are uh, based all over india they are um, practicing active physicians and uh, we the molecular oncology society is representative of uh, basically clinicians who wish to uh, push the cutting edge of science um, so molecular oncology and so it is no longer a um, there, that there is just a one cancer that can be treated by a molecule. But in fact, now we are reaching a point where we are very excited that we may be able to treat and prevent uh, numerous previously untreatable cancers. So there's a lot of excitement in the field. Uh, cancer 20 years ago, when we entered the field, uh, when we started doing research, was uh, a little bit more of a gloomy field. Uh, of course, the genome was sequenced uh, two decades ago, but um, this has really, the, the way things are going nowadays, we have uh, tools at our disposal, we have people uh, who are trained and we have got so much talent. Uh, so this this team, basically the Molecular Oncology Society, as well as our editorial team is representative of that, of uh, people who are not only trained in the clinical sciences, but also have kept up with the literature and are contributing new knowledge and uh, new developments to the field. And if you talk about the bridge that uh, is needed between the uh, medical practitioners, that is the professionals as well as uh, the publication house, what gap or what gap are we talking about to bridge this particular role? And if you could also highlight as how your particular journal is different from various other cancer journals. 
Yes, so uh, as I uh, mentioned, uh, so for one thing is uh, there are some excellent cancer journals which are very well established. Uh, this is a, a uh, for us, uh, the vision is to ha have uh, not only very niche work, uh, so molecular oncology, immuno oncology related work. So we would like, you know, we are excited about review articles, original uh, articles, uh, case reports um, mm -hmm. that uh, report uh, in a very uh, specific area, because this is the area that is very difficult for uh, a common uh, clinician to keep up with because of the, of the number of new bio biomarkers that keep coming up every day and uh, the number of new treatments that keep coming up. So it's, uh, however, it's not a pure clinical field. It's got a lot of basic science involved. And so, as I said, uh, being a bridge means uh, bringing uh, the very difficult concepts of the field out to a larger audience a larger audience by that i mean still clinicians and still uh, researchers okay it's still uh, targeted entirely at uh, people in the field however uh, keeping up with the new knowledge is extremely difficult and so our goal is to not only uh, give people a platform to uh, report their research or report their uh, cases but also to help them scientists and medical doctors understand what uh, new developments are out there so that is the bridge if you could just tell me about yourself and your role at the journal and some of the things that you usually do and what is your long-term vision yes so um as i said i joined i i uh, was part of the starting up team that uh, conceptualized ijmio and uh, it's uh, come a very long way since then because now we have a wonderful uh, team which uh, with great rapo and uh, you know i feel like i'm somewhere in the middle where um i so every article that comes through ijmio is seen by me and uh, you know we we have very high standards in terms of uh, having only only original writing original work we have peer review process uh, we have uh, a certain uh, type of articles that we prefer uh, that you know so it has to be related to molecular biology or immuno oncology and so on so these are the criteria that i uh, verify and i also have a uh, i communicate with the authors with the edi editors um, and the publishers so i'm in the middle of it all and this is a role that i uh, took on and i thoroughly enjoyed, um, have been enjoying. So it's uh, the reason I'm doing it is because it's a lot of fun. It's really fun to um, keep yourself challenged. Uh, you know, it's easy to get into our own comfort zones when we're doing some work, um, whatever profession you're in, it's uh, that's the, but when you are actually continuously um, trying to review and make decisions about new work, new research, new developments, you have to stay on top of things. And that's very exciting and challenging and I really enjoy this role. So that's basically what I do and uh, I'm along with our um, editor-in-chief Dr. Randeep Singh we are, um, and our editorial team. We are um, a very close-knit group at this point and we um, see the uh, whole process through. Dr. Purvish Parikh's uh, uh, blessings are always with us and he makes a point to attend our, he still makes a point to attend our meetings every single time, online and offline. And lastly, ma'am, if you could just tell us about your recent article, you had that you have an upcoming article on artificial intelligence and precision oncology, the way forward. So generally, my uh, goal is again to simplify very difficult concepts. When I write, so this is not me as an editor, but me wearing the author's hat. When I write, I like to uh, talk about some new concept and uh, try to make it interesting or simple. Um, so that, as I said, I can bridge that gap, you know. So we should, the article should be informative, interesting, innovative, um, if possible. So, um, we, I recently tied up with my uh, former colleague, who is uh, Jovan Rabaledo Mendez, and he is uh, uh, based in Japan. And we used to work uh, in uh, when I was in the U.S. We used to work together on a lot of our genomics uh, and proteomics-related research. You know, so we uh, basically uh, we were. Uh, 
he is a bioinformatician and an expert in artificial intelligence and i am um, being on the biology side so after about uh, six seven years we've tied up again uh, to write this article and uh, it, it is coming up in the next issue and it will be talking about just some uh, basic uh, but uh, concepts in artificial intelligence in oncology and uh, precision and oncology particularly because this is a field where you know uh, trying to predict uh, a person's outcome you know diff every individual will be different in terms of uh, their how a treatment might um, affect their disease so precision oncology is becoming a where artificial intelligence is already entering the clinical practice so uh, whether a physician whether a, a doctor likes it or not they are going to have to educate themselves to a certain extent uh, we all are going to have to educate ourselves on artificial intelligence not so we all are, we all are going to have to educate ourselves on artificial intelligence because we don't have a choice anymore it is already here to stay so that's my article uh, and uh, i look forward to bringing it to all of you thank you so much ma'am it was a great insight that you could actually detailly explain as to how the journal works it's the main vision behind it in the long run thank you so much ma'am it was lovely talking to you thank you dr nandita it was a pleasure being here that's all for today stay tuned to medical dialogues for latest updates never miss a medical update from medical dialogues like subscribe and press the bell icon